Hello everyone, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink, and as part of my Christmas series, I'm also kind of celebrating this mini um, Cyber Week release from Simon Says Stamp. Today they have released the classic Christmas Susie's printables. There's so many different sets that she's released over the past however long it's been, I'm not even sure. And these are all images that she has drawn that have been printed onto the smooth side of Distress watercolor paper. So all these pieces are four and a quarter by five and a half inches. So perfect for an A2 size card. I've done other videos with all the different um, other printables that she's done. There's so many. So they come in sets. They're awesome. They make great gifts. And I love them. That's because it's fun sometimes to sit down and basically like your image and your sentiment and everything is just done for you. So all you have to do is color it and stick it onto a card base. So for today's video, of course, it's still Christmas themed. It's part of my Christmas series. So I taped two of them down to just a hard board with some painter's tape. And then I pulled out a whole bunch of my Distress Ink minis. And I'm pressing them onto just my little Art Impressions plastic palette here. And then picking up the Distress Ink with my water brush and painting these images. Really, really simple. You can use either, you can use the Distress Inks, you can use watercolor markers, you could use watercolor paints. I know other designers have used Copics on this with great results. I haven't tried that yet but I'm kind of intrigued by the idea of that. So pretty much any like colored pencils will work great. Like any coloring media that suits your fancy, you can just, you know, sit and color these in. So I just took my time, colored everything. I ended up doing a good, like at least two layers of color. I would wait till one area would dry, then go on to the next. And I've obviously like super sped this up. This is about 20 times faster than it actually took me. These are all fairly simple though to color. You know, I've got my like Christmas colors here. For the greens, I would kind of mix several of them together. I was using pine needles, forest moss, and peeled paint, and would literally just kind of mix them all up together to create different shades of green to add, you know, darker areas and that. And I did the same thing with my reds. I ended up actually using festive berries as kind of my main red, but I added in like a little bit of candied apple. And then I use the aged mahogany sometimes. Um, I use more of the aged mahogany on like the little like berry images. But I would also like mix a little bit of the festive berries in with that just to give it a little more red. So I went along and I did my first the um, stocking image. And then the second one, this like flower image. They're not necessarily poinsettias. These could be um, hellebore flowers, which actually come in different colors. But I just instinctively went with red. So color those in and I still, I actually left this overnight, you know, had other things to do, whatever, came back next day and all these inks of course are still fine, you know, on the plastic palette and I had so much ink left I decided to do a couple more because I couldn't resist because these images I just love. So I taped two more down to a hard board and did the exact same thing, just picked up the color with my little water brushes, this is just the Tim Holtz Detailer water brush. I used that for all of these images except for um, the sky area of this Merry Christmas car one which I'll get to in a minute. So same thing, I would just go kind of back and forth between these and do one area at a time, like while I'm letting the other one drying, I would just go on, or while I had that certain color on my brush, I would go and fill in the other area. So just going along and um, adding, I would just add my little like base layer, which is just laying down the color. And then I would go back in with a more concentrated version, either of the same color, or I would add in a little bit of the darker ink, just to add in some more detail and like give it, you know, some shading and shadows and whatnot. So went in and then it's hard to tell on camera, but I went in with a really light, really watered down bit of like pumice stone to add in that shading. So then to do the sky for this car one, I turned the image upside down. I started with the narrow water brush, but then I took the wide Tim Holtz brush, which I hardly ever use, but I thought it'd be perfect for this. And it was because I was doing such a wide area. And I'm using chip sapphire distress ink and then just quickly painting it on this entire background to create the sky. So the, the narrow water brush got into the, like the narrow crevices near, uh, you know, and around the car and then the wide one just to cover the background quickly and easily. So after everything's completely dry, I pulled them off my hardboard and then I'm using my white gel pen. I started on this image and I started just filling in all the little areas on the snowflakes and then started adding in all the highlights onto the image. And then while I was thinking about this and doing this, I was like, hmm, I want to make the sentiment stand out because I use that such a dark... 
um, you know, distressing to kind of cover the background. It makes that Merry Christmas kind of just fade into it. So I ended up going over it with my gel pen and my camera died, my camera battery died while I was doing this. So I lost that footage, but I'm just pretty much tracing over the letters with the white gel pen. And then I dotted the pen all over the entire image. I started with a few dots and then couldn't stop myself and created like an entire snowy little scene. So after I did that one, I just went along all these other images and added in the highlights with my white gel pen. It just makes everything pop. You know, it just gives it that little extra something. So I've had a lot of people ask, like, how do you know where to add the highlights? Honestly, I just, I still kind of picture my light source out of habit as coming from the upper right. So I kind of want to add the highlights as if that's where the light would be hitting. But even then, I honestly just add it, not just as highlights, but just to add that texture and little bit of definition. And especially anything with, um, that's kind of winter themed, holiday themed, etc. It's a lot easier to kind of get away with. Like, no one's going to be like, oh, you added the highlight in the wrong place. Because you, you could just easily be like, that's snow. <laughs> You know, so it's like, eh, whatever. I don't really honestly think about it too much. I just add it in and then if I want to, I'll add a little, you know, dots and whatnot just to give it that little extra something or just use it as snow. But it really just kind of makes everything pop. So I was just going along, adding little dots to the berries, adding little highlights to the larger images, adding little like scribbles to the leaves and the pine bows and that sort of a thing just to, you know, give them that extra something that makes the entire image pop. So after I'd done all that highlighting, I used the largest of the wonky rectangles die from Simon and die cut all of those images. So it just gives it that nice finished edge and then all that stitching along all of them. And then my card bases, I took a piece of Schoolhouse red cardstock and a piece of our Audrey blue cardstock, cut them both in half lengthwise, and then scored them all at five and a half. So my card bases will be top folding A2 size cards. And then I'm putting these all in my Misty and I'm using this um, Inside Holiday Greetings stamp set from Simon. This came out forever ago, I think two or three years ago. I'm not even sure how old the set is. I've had it forever. But I pulled out four different sentiments. I'm going to add a different sentiment to the inside of each card. So I'm just lining up the cards in my Misty and then lining up the sentiments with that and then stamping everything with VersaFine Onyx Black Ink. And it just helps to make sure that I get these sentiments stamped perfectly because almost all of them I had to stamp more than once because I was just, I ended up doing most of these fairly late at night. So I got all of my sentiments stamped with that VersaFine Onyx Black Ink. And then in that Inside Holiday Greeting stamp is a like ornamental, like kind of decorative sort of image. So I pulled that out of the set and I'm going to ink that up with Hero Arts Unicorn White Ink and just stamp it below each of the sentiments just to kind of finish it off, give it that little little finishing touch. So ink that up with the unicorn white ink and then I'm going to stamp that underneath every sentiment on all of these um, cards. And I did honestly struggle with um, keeping these cards simpler. There's so many things, you know, I was thinking about popping things up with foam tape. I thought about cutting out that stocking image, you know, fussy cutting it out and popping it up on a different background. Um, adding crystal drops also you could you could do all that sort of add sequins and all those things but in the end I decided to adhere all of these flat to the card base these would be so easy to just pop into the mail or do a gift set of you know color them all up get the card bases made you know package them all together and it would be an amazing you know gift set or you could, you know, like I said, you could also do up all the card bases and just give the package of coloring cards to someone so that they could color, you know, make their own cards. There's so many things you could do with these. I love them. So I just adhered mine flat to the card bases and let the coloring and the highlights and everything just be. It was hard. I wanted to add rhinestones to everything, <laughs> but in the end decided just to keep them as is. So as always, I will have links below the video to my blog post. I'll have links to all the supplies used. I know Simon's got a little mini blog hop going on on their blog with tons of other like the amazing coloring. I know Laura made a shaker card with one of hers. Like it's amazing. So I will link to the blog hop as well on my blog post. So check that out below if you were interested. Thank you all so much for watching, subscribing, thumbs upping, and commenting on my videos. And I will see you all very soon in the next one. Bye.